Jim, our next question, one that was a popular topic sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from William Molina Jr. JR laid it down thick on John Laurinaitis and would like your comments on what JR said about John Laurinaitis since Jim enjoys torching Johnny Ace. Here's a quote from Jim Ross. I had a hard time, as time went on, trusting Laurinaitis. That's sad to say. I hired him. I gave him a job when he needed it. I don't think he treated me quite right. He just wanted to show Vince that he was a better manager than JR and all these things. So now his ass is without a job, and he deserves the goddamn misery that he's living, that I perceive that he's living, and I don't like, excuse me, and I didn't like how he treated me. So we've heard you talk a lot about Johnny Ace over the years. What do you think of Jim Ross's comments? Well, I mean, that says a lot. Um, the guy, he wanted to be a big-time corporate executive in the corporate world, and he wanted to wear suits and smile and say yes a lot to the people that were important and employing him. That's why we said, you know, the same thing. Mrs. Baba liked him because he was a cute blonde guy, Gene. Stephanie liked him because he agreed with her a lot. Whereas JR would go to Vince and say, well, here's my opinion, and he'd tell the truth. John Laurinaitis just sucked up, back bit, backstabbed, and talked up to people that he wanted to suck up to. And he, like JR said, he is the one that hired him. And then he turns around and he starts going behind JR's back and putting the mouth on him, as Dennis Corluzzo would say, or whatever. He wanted to, John Laurinaitis wanted to keep his job and make sure that he was taken care of rather than giving an actual legitimate opinion in most cases. And he wanted people to know or to think that he was a great executive and a big expert and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, and, you know, J.R. gave him more of a fucking, not a chance, but J.R. gave him more benefit of the doubt than I did because and I think J.R. has even said this in the past. I always saw John Laurinaitis as Johnny Ace of the Dynamic Dudes. And I could not neither get that out of my mind nor could I accept or agree with or go along with John Laurinaitis, Johnny Ace of the Dynamic Dudes, telling me anything about the fucking wrestling business. Jim Ross, yes. Johnny Ace, no. So just because they like people who like to wear suits and look good in them that smile a lot and say yes, I'm sorry that Jim Ross was a wrestling executive. Johnny Ace was a stooge in a suit. Do you think Johnny Ace will ever work in wrestling again? Well, at this point, I think we talked about this when he was fingered so to speak in the in the fallout from vince's illegal paralegal does he why would he need to at this point he had a job with them most time for the last 15 years is he a complete imbecile with his money why would he ever have to work again if you've been an executive with the wwf for 15 fucking years and you need a job in the next 10 you've either got a meth habit or a gambling problem so i and, and he's almost as old as i am so I don't see why he would, but I don't see anybody clamoring for his serve. What does he do? Everybody said, well, he was a great finish guy. He was? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're talking about, well, he learned all those finishes in Japan. Would he work for it? Good, then go to Japan and book the finishes. Because booking finishes in Japan and the United States is two different fucking things. I'm, you know, I'm not even... I liked his brother. like both of his brothers. Don't know where Mark is these days. Um, he lied to me when, when I was in charge of OVW and he was in charge of talent relations and he was a pain in the ass and he never exhibited that he had any exceptional knowledge of wrestling, either it's history or how it works or finishes or angles or promos or whatever. The only time I ever saw him get any heat as a performer was when he came down and guessed it on OVW television. Then he was the hottest heel in the company because I had made him the fucking blame for when all of our OVW talent got called up to the main roster and got stupid gimmicks and rotten names. 
I finally had to say, well, the executive of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, is at the root of this. And so that's the only time that people actually ever gave a shit about Johnny Ace on the program as a talent, either as a baby face or a heel. And his whole career was when he was a goddamn heel in OVW. The people really did fucking hate him because they blamed him for ruining all their favorite wrestlers. But uh, otherwise, no, I, I don't, I don't never have seen any wrestling expertise in John Laurinaitis. If there was one wrestler in OVW more than any other wrestler that you think would have a lawsuit against Johnny Ace for just damaging their career, the career that could have been, you could only pick one, who would it be? Who will? Hold on. Is it, does one count if it's a tag team? Because the, the Bashams, once they were saddled with that fucking Linda Miles, that was it. They, t- they cool young guys that could work their ass off in tremendous physical shape and that looked great and a hell of a tag team. And they get a rotten manager that gets featured over them. And uh, there you go. I think, yeah, I, th- I think that may be the, 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 t- I mean, there's a bunch of them, but that may be the topper. And it's not like they fucking wanted to go along with it. Cause Dinsmore wanted to go along with the Eugene thing. I hated that even worse, but he wanted to go along with it. So it's partially his fault. The Bashams didn't want any part of Linda Miles or all that fucking stupid shit they were doing. And those are the good days, because you had a couple of years where almost the entire class was either not used or misused or the hair was cut or Dolph Ziggler may be the only remaining one out of everyone that uh, well, yeah, the, the main the, roster. The Spirit Squad got slaughtered en masse. They, uh, you know, Jeter and Mondo were the victims of that because they should obviously still be in high positions today in the business. That was 20 years ago, but yeah. So yeah, I don't think anybody's beating the door down for Johnny Ace to come and do anything on their wrestling program. But let's go back to this lawsuit. If you were a wrestler and you were one of the ones that could sue and you wanted to sue, who could you sue with? Oh, well now you're trying to do one and it was so slick. I didn't even fucking realize it. I know. Well, in that case, let's just get right to the meat of the matter. I'll tell you the son of a bitch to call. Call Stephen P. the rest folks it's just it's come to this that i can't even listen closely enough to brian last to pick up on these odd and obscure transitional points but nevertheless i'll tell you who can pick you up and dust you off and start you all over again if you've been maligned mistreated lied to damaged harmed hurt or even starved to death son of a gun he'll do something for you about it and that's our man stephen p new at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. And Brian, you know where Stephen's headed next. He's going down to my old stomping grounds, down to the Mid-South Territory, Louisiana Lookout. Stephen P. New shook the corridors of justice in West Virginia and shook Governor Jim Justice up at the same time. He had a state of emergency declared over in West Virginia not long ago. And Louisiana... You're next on the list. Brian, there is an energy company down there, and I'm going to have a lot more details next week because I was hearing this story from Stephen. I said, I've got to, you got to jot these names and things down for me because what a story this is. One of the big energy companies down there, they got hit by Hurricane Katrina. A lot of people suffered. They lost power. The grid was off, blah, blah, blah. They said, we're not going to let this happen again. You just give us a bunch of million dollars in government money and we're going to fix this thing so that no hurricane's going to blow it over. And that's what they did. They got the money from the government and they, instead of performing the repairs and replacements that they were supposed to, they gave a bunch of bonuses out to the big wigs, to the bosses, the head honchos, the chief cooks and bottle washers, 
and didn't upgrade the power grid and the infrastructure. And along came this, what, what was it a while back? There's been so many, hur Hurricane Buford. Hurricane Buford came through. They're only 90-something mile an hour winds. They were supposed to have this thing proofed up to where it could withstand 150 mile an hour winds, 90-something miles an hour. Whole goddamn thing collapses. People without power for weeks at a time. People on respirators. People in home health care. People on the CPAP machines. Couldn't get a good night's sleep. Some of them, they couldn't wake up. And it's all because of the greed and avaricity, avariciousness, avariciosity of the big energy companies and all these big business people. And that's the kind of pompous asshole that Stephen P. New likes to take down. And there's going to be big news coming out of the state of Louisiana. Shocking news about the power grid. Electrifying, scintillating even. And after Stephen P. New gets finished with the folks down there in Louisiana, he can do the same thing for you. Even if your power grid is operating, just call Stephen P. New and just tell him your life story and he'll figure out some way that you've been screwed around and he can fix. 888-692-8084, the number to call, newlawoffice.com. Get even with Stephen. If you need to sue, call Stephen P. New. You know the rest. He's the consigliere. And he's gonna be he's gonna be the new kingfish down there in Louisiana. Governor He's gonna replace Governor Huey P. Long as the <laughs> kingfish. And you know, here's something else about Louisiana. I've said this for 40 years, because I lived there and it was proven and it was told to me, and I saw it in front of my eyes. Louisiana is the crookedest state in the union and has been for the past hundred years. Why every bridge in the state of Louisiana is named after a former governor, and every bridge in the state of Louisiana was built on a former governor's brother-in-law's property. I've been across the Governor Huey P. Kingfish Long Bridge. Son of a gun, they charged me to get on, charged me to get off. We'll just wait till they charge you for the Stephen P. New Bridge. I've been, you know, I've been charged a bunch of time to get off, but I've never been charged to get on. <laughs>